Japan seems to have their triple header ready for September 18th, which is, of course, in the middle of a week. For what reason? We may never know. But, of course, it will be Kenshiro Teraji will be defending his unified light flyweight world championship against Budler. And, of course, the co-main event, that being Junto Nakatani, will be defending his WBO Super Flyweight World Championship against RG Cortez. And, of course, uh, they also got some other dude. Uh, they don't want to say his opponent. But we are not going to be talking about the main event. For what reason? I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I have no idea who who uh, Kenshiro is. I, I don't know. I mean, look at his division. Look at his other, look at the other champions in the light flyweight world champion. They got... Sevenanti Nashinga and Jonathan Gonzalez. Who? That division. Irrelevant. But of course, the super flyaway one is a little bit better. They got the WBA champion, Kazuto Ioka, Juan Francisco Estrada, Fernando Martinez, and of course, Juno Nakatani. And of course, he will be fighting RG Cortez. And, and, you, and if you don't know him, he actually fought Juan Francisco Estrada. Although he did lose via decision, it was a good fight where Cortez gave everything, you know, he got and was winning the fight up until he got dropped with a body shot, which kind of changed changed the directory of the fight. And of course, Nakatani is coming off of his 12th round brutal KO over Andrew Maloney. Very bad knockout, but he is coming back four months later. Right, and of course, RG Cortez is 25 and 3 with two draws, which is a interesting record to say the least. I mean, his two losses came back to back in 2015 and 2014, exactly one year apart. What the hell? He lost the first time via DQ for um, I don't know. I don't think it says it. And he lost the other one via majority decision. And he went on a winning streak where he also got two draws, not back to back, but. Close in close um, proximity with each other. And of course, he fought all the way up until 2022, 20, where he fought Juan Francisco Estrada, where he lost obviously unanimous decision, where he got dropped via to the body. And let me tell you something: when he got hurt to the body, he did everything in his power to not get hit in that same spot again. This man was moving in such weird ways where his body was just—he couldn't touch it. That's why he lasted as long as he did, especially to the. To, uh, to hear the final bell. He was over here like shifting his body. Like nah you ain't touching my body no more. And his next two wins are not too impressive. One via split decision. One via majority decision. Then again one of them. Was his old sparring partner. As um, they made it very clear during that fight. They were all like yo man you're not supposed to fight your own sparring partner. Because they may not be as good as you technically. But they know all your skills. So you know it's never... You know, a good thing. Who do I think is going to win this one? To be honest, it's, it's most likely going to be Nakatani. Massive power puncher, 76% knockout ratio, while Cortez has a measly 40%. Although he is a good boxer and he has pop in his shots, that doesn't mean you're going to have to outbox Nakatani for 12 rounds, which he almost did with Estrada, which I would assume is the better boxer of the both. But then again, Estrada is older and... As I keep saying, unless it's Chuck Latito or one of the other kings of the division, he kind of doesn't really put that much effort. But then again, Andrew Maloney lasted 12 rounds of a beatdown to get knocked down in the 12th. Although it was a brutal KO, it was in the 12th. Meaning Cortez, with his ability, and I mean, considering his last two decisions weren't impressive, especially against good opponents, in their try to fight, it shows that if, he, if it's a big stage, he will show up. And I think this one will go decision. I think Cortez is a good enough boxer to make it the 12 rounds. He did it with Estrada. And Estrada is a good body puncher. Nakatani, I don't say he's a bad body puncher, but he's not known for his body work. I mean, he does body work. I mean, every boxer does. But, you know, Cortez won't be needing to do the, the, the shuffle anymore to protect his body like last time. I got Nakatani via split decision. I think Cortez's movement and the way he you know, adapts to when he's hurt. <laughs> we'll definitely make it to the final belt. But, of course, it is a Japanese fighter in Japan. I do think Cortez 
could be robbed. But then again, there is a high chance that he gets knocked out because, like I said, the last two decisions, not the best. He didn't look the best. He looked good against Estrada. I don't know if that was a fluke. I mean, then again, you don't fluke around for like six rounds or something, right? Or or what? I don't know if he's going to come back the same way that he did with Estrada or is it going to just be him getting dominated. But hopefully, hopefully it's a good fight. But, you know, screw it. You know, like, let's talk about the main event. And that is, of course, the Unified World Champion, who actually lost his belt via via 10-round TKO. But he did come back and knocked out that same guy in a third round. So, safe to assume it was most likely a fluke. And he went on a two, two, he went on two more fights against undefeated opponents, although one was a 5-0 and fighter, so take that with a grain of salt. But he did knock both out. This man is, of course... 21 and 1 with 13 knockouts and of course that one loss is by knockout but like we said safe to assume it was probably a fluke and of course he is facing a 35 and 4 fighter with 11 knockouts and one and four defeats with one knockout for the defeat and that was his most recent defeat against another Japanese fighter he lost to some new who already lost to the champion that's what yeah he literally lost to Hiroto Kiwaguchi, who got knocked out by the champion. So, safe to assume that this division isn't too deep if they're reusing fighters. But then again, Nagatani is literally fighting someone who already lost in his attempt to capture an interim world title, which then got elevated to a world champion because the champion vacated. But, damn, they reuse and stuff. Damn, that's, not, that's sad, right? But this guy does have wins over Elwin Soto, who um, was trying to come back but lost to... The other champion, Gonzalez. I mean, he was a former champion, right? So this is not good for Hiki Butler. I think he, I think, I think Kenshiro knocks him out. I think he knocks him out in the eighth round. What the hell? I didn't know he already lost to someone who lost to someone. And that loss was TKO. So it's not like he lost decision or split decision. So a close match. No, he got knocked out by a dude that got knocked out by the champion who he's fighting. That's. That's crazy, but I get it. It's not no rock, paper, scissors. It's not no, oh, if I lose to this guy who lost to this guy, which means I'm going to lose to that guy. I don't. That's not how it works. So for all we know, he could pull off the upset. Is that going to happen? No. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. He's not He's not going to pull off the upset. He's going to get knocked out. Oh, by the way, when I say that two undefeated opponents, one of them was um, the champion when he unified. So that's cool. I don't know why he fought a 5-0 and undefeated fighter, but whatever. But yeah. I got Nakatani winning split decision against Cortez, unless Cortez wants to act dumb and, and not fight his best, which then I got Nakatani six-round KO. And, of course, Kenshiro Tiraji. I got eighth-round KO over Budler because, for some reason, he lost to someone. He, he got knocked out by someone who got knocked out by the fighter. That's that's crazy. That is that is crazy. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm doing a little bit more research right now. That guy was a champion. That guy was the former champion. Yeah, that, that was a 16-0 undefeated champ. Dude, I, I need to do my research. The 16-0 fighter that I was talking about, the, the other champion, was the guy that knocked out Butler. That makes it even more depressing. Butler's just getting there to be fed to the slaughter. No, Butler. Ah, screw that. I'm changing my decision from 6th round, from 8th round KO to 7th round KO. He's, oh, wait. Butler's screwed. He was never meant to win. He never had a chance. I'm sorry, Butler. Hope the paycheck... Covers, I don't know, maybe maybe go to vacation with your family afterwards, because that's, that's, nah, hell no. They're feeding it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video, everyone. Pray, if you're not religious, do scientific equations or something for Butler. Make sure he's uh, okay, because he's, this is not going to end well for him. I'm sorry. But I hope you enjoyed the video. The next video, of course, will be the Canelo Charlo September 30th pay-per-view match. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.